The CDC estimates up to 100,000 patients will die every single year from a pulmonary embolism. So let's talk about PEs and how you can recognize them. Alright, in part four of the five common causes of sudden unexpected death that every EMS provider should know, we're going to talk about the pulmonary embolism. So what exactly is a pulmonary embolism? So in your lungs, you have some large, large vessels. And those vessels, the veins, are returning blood back up to the heart. So if we develop a clot down here, and that clot breaks free, that clot will travel up into the heart. This clot down here is called a deep venous thrombosis. They don't always break free, but they do frequently break free. So that'll shoot up here to the right side of the heart, down through the ventricle, and then up into the pulmonary arteries. Now those pulmonary arteries from the heart side to the capillary side where the alveoli themselves are, they go from big down to small. So that clot, as it's traveling through there, say it's about that big, it's gonna continue through and eventually get wedged and it's gonna block and occlude the vessels, all right? That means that there's going to be less blood returning to the lungs for all that oxygen exchange and all that kind of stuff, right? So what that causes is something called a VQ mismatch. Now in a VQ mismatch, basically we have poor perfusion because of a blood clot. There's not as much blood getting down to the alveoli, depending on where the clot is. It could be a small amount of alveoli affected. It could be a large portion of the, the alveoli affected, such as in a, a saddle PE, okay? So if it's blocking all that blood, what that means is, is even though the ventilations are appropriate and we're breathing appropriately, which is the V, the Q, which is the perfusion, is poor. So there's a ventilation to perfusion mismatch. That means that oxygen is not going from the alveoli into the capillaries, and it's also not receiving CO2 from those vessels, okay? The capillaries and the, the blood is not kicking that CO2 off because it can't get down there. So what does that all mean for us as far as vital signs are concerned? So your blood pressure, you have poor return from the lungs to the left side of the heart. So your blood pressure is going to decrease. Because of that decrease, we're going to have a compensatory effect where the heart rate increasing. All right, now we have that VQ mismatch, and because of that VQ mismatch, we're going to have a low SAO2, so a low pulse oximetry reading. Now, if our oxygen saturation is low, that means our respiratory rate is going to increase to help compensate. And then end tidal CO2, because again, you can't get that CO2 back across, and tidal CO2 is also going to be low. And entitled CO2, we're starting to discover, is more and more and more predictive in the presence of that chest pain and those, those PE symptoms. It's more and more predictive than we ever thought before of a PE. So this is a very, very important vital sign to keep track of in possible PEs. Now, PE risk factors. So a sedentary lifestyle where somebody doesn't move around a whole lot, that also means that their blood is not going to be able to leave the legs as much and as easily because the muscles aren't contracting to help kind of flow all that blood. So they develop clots in their legs a whole lot easier. On top of that, hospitalizations, where again, they're not moving around a whole lot because of that, okay? So hospitalizations, and then also travel. So this is going to be long distances. We've all sat on a plane or sat in a car for too long of a period of time and our legs just start to fall asleep or you, your feet start to swell, stuff like that. That's all part of that kind of sedentary situation. All right. Some other things that are going to affect it. Smoking increases your risk of blood clots. Maybe previous medical history of strokes or STEMIs, stuff like that, heart attacks. Uh, and then also pregnancy. 
Now in pregnancy, let's also talk about birth control. Birth control basically pretends to your body, some of the hormonal stuff, that you are pregnant. And that affects your clotting ability, okay? That actually increases the ability to clot. So you will have an increased clotting in both pregnancy, post-pregnancy, and then also if you're taking birth control pills, all right? Specifically the hormonal stuff. So that all right there is gonna increase our risk of getting a pulmonary embolism. Now some signs of a PE, they might feel palpitations. All right, shortness of breath, chest pain. And then also this is called hemoptysis. This is when you're coughing up blood. So all of these can be some symptoms of a PE amongst some other stuff as well, but these are some of the big ones. All right, so EKG changes or ECG changes that we might see on a pulmonary embolus. And this isn't all of them, these are some of the bigger ones, all right? Sinus tachycardia or atrial arrhythmias, this is gonna happen in 40 plus percent of PEs. Right ventricular strain pattern is actually very, uh, very, very specific, but not very sensitive. Okay, and we'll talk about that here in a second what right ventricular strain pattern is. A right bundle branch block, right axis deviation, specifically extreme right axis, right atrial enlargement of people now. Now you're probably starting to see there's a lot of right-sided heart stuff, okay? So let's just go ahead and write that down. Right side of the heart. And we were just talking about how much this basically starts to affect the right side of the heart because of all that backup from the blood clot in the lungs. So that's why we're seeing right-sided heart stuff. You could almost just say that right-sided heart things is PE possible, okay? On top of that, if we look up here and we look at where in the heart, where in the heart do we have our SA node? Again, that's in the right side of the heart. So right-sided heart things are pretty much PE things, okay? Um, and then there's also the pattern S1, Q3, T3. We'll talk about that in just a second here, but it's actually not as common as we once thought it was. And then other non-specific ST and T wave changes. So looking in this uh, patient right here, this ECG, this patient does have a PE. They have right ventricular strain pattern, which is inverted T waves in V1, V2, V3, and V4. And V4 is sometimes there, sometimes not. It's also inverted T waves in two, three, and AVF. And you can see up here in two, it's kind of that biphasic, but it's a terminal depression, okay? That is all part of that right ventricular strain pattern. On top of that, this patient also has tachycardia. And then let's look over here at the S wave. It's a big deep S wave in one. And then we have an inverted T and a remarkable Q in three. So that's S1, and there's a Q3, and a T that's inverted in three. And that's going to be that described pattern of S1, Q3, T3, all right? So these are some things that you might see on an EKG. And the only reason I describe that S1, Q3, T3 is because it's still commonly taught in textbooks and stuff, but take a really good look at this right ventricular strain pattern because this is a lot more common and more uh, specific to these patients, okay? All right, here's another ECG. This patient doesn't have tachycardia, but I do see signs of a right bundle branch block. So this patient does have that right bundle branch block. And again, right bundle branch, right side of the heart. All right, let's look and see, do we have inverted T's in V1 through V4? We do, and we have inverted T's in 2, 3, and AVF. So they also have the right ventricular strain pattern, all right? And then let's look for S1, Q3, T3. Let's see if that exists. So deep S, Q wave is prominent in, two, in 3, excuse me, and inverted T. So we also have S1, Q3, T3. So this patient with chest pain, I would be very, very suspicious 
of a pulmonary embolism. All right. All right. So thank you very much for joining us for this video. If you guys enjoy this content, please follow us for Master Your Medics. Uh, join us over at mastermedics.com. And then also thank you for GEMS for providing a bunch of this content. It's fantastic. Make sure to check out their website.